for your trace SM here, which is the tracing tool in session manager, it's a real time tracing tool. You have this SIP entity link monitoring status summary, which is another page where you could monitor the status of the SIP entities around session manager and see if those are up or down. We're gonna see later that session manager monitors, if you want, monitors the health status of the SIP entities by sending a SIP options request to the SIP entity. And if the entity answers with 200 OK, the entity is up. Is that like a keep alive message? Similar to a, to a keep alive message, it's mm -hmm. just that they're doing it with SIP. And yeah. Avaya decided to do it with the options messages. It's not a SIP standard to do it like that. Okay. But Avaya decided to do it with options request. So if you see an options message going to a SIP entity, that means that session is trying to monitor that SIP entity and see if it's up or down. If the SIP entity answers with a 200 OK, it means the entity is up. If it doesn't answer, or if it answers with something rather than that 200 OK, it usually means that the SIP entity is down. And then session manager doesn't try to route through that SIP entity anymore, but it tries to route somewhere else if there is some sort of alternate routing config. But just remember that 200, the option messages are how session manager monitor the state or the, the health status of SIP entities. Tracing tools like TraceSM here in page 59, I'll talk about that one later. Maintenance tools, so you're able to see alarms and logs in System Manager for the applications being managed in System Manager. So if you're managing CM or Session Manager from System Manager, you could get to see here alarms and logs coming from CM and, and Session Manager. Again, it's just a small chapter, just kind of introducing those names and we'll talk about those later. Page 61, let's see if you have good memory. ABC. What? Okay, <laughs> ABC. Those are the tools used for troubleshooting session manager. <coughs> System manager overview. So system manager is a central point of administration. It supports the Aviora components. And we're gonna start with the labs. Yeah. So we're not doing session manager labs after we just went through it? No, they, we, uh, that was just like to uh, position session manager so that you understand better what session manager does. Okay. Now we're gonna position system manager. We, I kind of already did it because you already know it's about administration. And right after these slides related to system manager, we're gonna start with labs related to system manager. And later today, no, later tomorrow, so, sorry, we'll do some session manner exercises. So tomorrow we'll start dealing with session manner until the very end of the week. But today's from now, we're gonna be about system manner. So system manner supports uh, the Avaya Aura components, mostly, uh, mainly the ones that are in the UC portfolio. It's a central point of administration and it allows you to provision users and also administer the applications, pretty much. Page 64, I have system manager with two main roles. The one that you see on your left, on the left, is the centralized product management tool. So that means that system manager allows you to administer, configure, and license a value application. <coughs> there is another role, which is to be a user profile management tool, which allows you to provision users in the enterprise. and create a central user profile for the users. Go to page 65. So without system manager, without system manager, uh, you have, as, as the administrator, you have to create a profile on every single Avaya application. Like for example, this is CM. Let's pretend for a second that this is your modular messaging or aura messaging. So if you don't have system <coughs> manager, what you need to do is go to each application and create the profile there. Like let's say you have a new employee and you need to give that employee telephony. So you go to CM and you create a station for that user. You need to give, you, now you need to give that employee a voicemail. 
So you go to Aura Messaging and you go and, and give that user voicemail. You would have to go to two different interfaces, two different GUIs, and create the user there, provision the user there. If you have a conferencing solution and you want to provide the user with a video conference room, you would have to go now to the conferencing solution with a different GUI and create a profile there. With System Manager, the benefit of System Manager is that if you have System Manager integrated with those applications, you only need to go to System Manager, you create a central profiling System Manager, and System Manager pushes those profiles to the different application. So it saves time. And also, if you're a new administrator, all you need to do is get familiar with System Manager. You don't really need to get familiar with all of the other Avaya applications, you know, so the ramp up time for you as a new administrator is also quicker. Are we gonna do that in the class? Yes, not with messaging, not with conferencing, but you're gonna see that when you create a new user, if you create it, if it's a CM user, you don't need to go to CM. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you how. There, we don't have a messaging application uh, mm -hmm. here, but I'll show you, I'll give you an example, probably create a fake one, and show you what would be the process to do, yeah, so that you can see. Is the, inter is the, uh, the interface in System Manager for, let's say, somebody who, like an admin like myself, that's creating a station and a voicemail box, is it, is it uh, all one type of screen, or is it like some sort of a plugin that allows me to see no. or a messaging? It's as, as soon as you define the Avaya application in the system and inventory, uh -huh. you're now gonna see that section where you just simply... I see. Back in release 6.3, you got to see all of those sections even though those elements were, were not in the inventory, in the system and inventory. Okay. And it was kind of messy, you know, because it would, you, you would uh, tend to think that you would be able to configure those. Right but you wouldn't because there was no none of those systems. Now in release seven, let me actually show it to you as a, with one of the systems. Okay. So if I go to, in system manager, if I go to user management, manage users, mm -hmm. which is the place where you create new users. Okay. And I'm gonna create a new one. or we'll just show you something here. This would only be for uh, SIP endpoint users. No, okay. this is what I want to stretch out. This is for any user. Because that's a good question, because a lot of people think that here is where you create your SIP endpoints, and through the CM menu is where you con configure your non-SIP endpoints. But the truth is that if you truly want to take advantage of system manager as a central point of administration, you should create all of your users here and then specify, if it's a SIP user, specify a session manner profile. If it's a non-SIP user, specify a CM endpoint profile. But the benefit of doing it from here, I'm gonna go to communication profile, and probably for some of you, this is completely new, so it's okay, let's just take to take, just try to, to, to see the, the, the most you can see from here, and then you'll get more familiar with these pages. But what I'm trying to point out is that right now, since I don't have a CM in the inventory, I don't have a CM section here. This is new with seven. Since I don't have a messaging solution yet in my inventory, in system and inventory, I don't have a uh, messaging section here. But later, if I add CM to the inventory and I add uh, messaging to the inventory, you would see two sections here. So the benefit, if I get to see those sections, even if it's not a SIP endpoint, I would never configure a session manager profile that which, by the way, notice that there is no session manager profile either because there's no session manager in the inventory. You're gonna be adding that one. But my point is, even if it's not a SIP endpoint, which wouldn't have a session manager profile, you could here associate to CM, associate to messaging, and let system manager push those profiles to CM and the messaging application. You know, instead of you having to go to CM directly and having to go to messaging directly. Is that applicable for Aura products only, or is CS1000 going to have a communication profile and it's maybe applicable, even Cisco or It's applicable for the 
you see applications that you're able to manage here in the middle section. Yeah. So the CS1K, it's gonna be one. Yeah, so Conferencing, which is the new Equinox. Uh, Breeze, which is the EDP, now it's rebranded as Breeze. We just, I just need to install another service pack to change that name to Breeze. IP Office, Media Server, Meeting Exchange, you know, so system manager is going to be able to push those profiles to those applications. So that's the main benefit of system manager. So like Media Server would be an example of order messaging? Yeah. No, no, no. Media Server, remember that. Oh, messaging. Messaging. Messaging would be okay, the, the aura messaging. Media yeah. Server is the one that gives you those virtual yes, DSPs. Gotcha, okay. Your announcements. announcements. And announcements, and yeah. So, so it'll list all your UC applications that you manage, right? So yeah. if you wanna, like, if you don't wanna give breeze to somebody, so. you just give that and yeah. And as down the list. later, let me go to the inventory here and show you that there's nothing right now in the inventory in system manager. Notice that everything is related to the same IP address, which is the IP address of your system manager. There is no session manager yet. No TM, no nothing, no messaging. But later when you add applications to the inventory, if you go to user management, you'll see different sections here under the user profile. And that's where you're able to associate the user with those applications. And then when you click on commit, system manager goes to all of those applications and create the profile for you. This is a silly question. Every time I'm in here, I'm not sure if I should hit commit or commit and continue. <laughs> That's a good commit question. and continue yeah. allows you to save and keep the page open. Okay. That's com in commit, saves, and closes the page. Okay. So if you want to save but still do something, you go with commit and continue. Now, I personally prefer to click on commit because I've, I've seen scenarios where I click on commit and continue and system manager gives you an error for one second and it removes the error and if you were not looking at it you don't realize that you didn't save because of that error and you are thinking that you saved right and you actually didn't so I actually prefer to click on commit and I know that if the page closes yeah I actually say you know so I haven't I'm not sure if I is doing a better job with those error messages in seven. I would imagine they're doing a better job because things that in six to three, there were some error messages that just pop out for a second and then they're removed from the GUI. And you, you never know if you actually say. Going back for a second on the, on the um, on like aura messaging plugin, however you want to call it. How robust is that? Like, is it, can you get all of the features and functionality that you can address to a user? Because yeah. I, yeah, we use the aura messaging, we go in individually right now to the aura messaging box and there are separate sub menus that allow you to, how you present the messages first, oldest, newest, all that stuff is available? Over yeah, because here? what you do is create templates. Let me do something here right away. I'm gonna add our aura messaging to the inventory mm -hmm. cool. and it's gonna be a dummy one because I have no aura messaging. So type, it's messaging. Let's see if I'm able to add it. We just with a fake, let's say this is Avaya Aura Messaging. That's the name. And the node, it's just a fake node with a fake IP address. And let's see, attributes. Uh, this is gonna ask me for, let's just say it's a student. Just put some stuff there, <laughs> just because I have to. Messaging type, I don't know what messaging type is, maybe AMS. Let me see if I'm able to commit here. Okay, I was able to add it. It's a fake one, there is no messaging, but I just wanna show you, mm -hmm. well, let me see, that now the user management, if I create a new user. Oh, I'm still in the same place, hold on. User management, new user. And I go to the communication profile now you, I see a messaging profile. You see, yeah, I didn't exactly. have this before. Right. If That's I cool. expand it, you select your messaging application. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to, I wanted you to see the options: mailbox number, mm -hmm. template, That's awesome. and the password. Right. That's it. And it's within the template 
where you assign a class, a class of service to the user right. and everything else to the user. That's great. You build these templates. Right now, are, they're empty. But if you go here to templates, you're able to create templates for a lot of stuff. One of them is messaging. And you'll create a template, first specify the release of that messaging, and then you create a template. See, so for the new administrator, this is easy to configure because yeah. he really doesn't need to be familiar with messaging that yeah. much. All he needs to know is that this is the specific template that he needs to assign, yeah. and the mailbox number and the password, that's it. Same thing is gonna happen with conferencing. You know, if it's the Avaya or a conferencing or meeting exchange, or you're gonna be able to easily yeah provision the users with a profile there by doing something similar. Just probably it's gonna be a conference room number and a password, and right. that's it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to actually remove that from your, I'm working in your lab <laughs> right now, lab one. I'm gonna remove that one. Okay, so that's the benefit of Thank system you. management. Thank you. Okay, page 66. And stay, for, stay with me just 20 more minutes. I know that probably you're starting to get hungry. And I'll let you go at 12.30. Let me finish this so that when you come back from lunch, we start doing laps because I don't want to cover theory after lunch. It's so hard, I'll see you <laughs> sleeping. I know. I already know that, okay? So let's do laps after lunch. So System Mar has some additional roles. You could configure single sign-on to System Manager in case you want to use the same credentials that you might have in Active Directory. And instead of having to remember new credentials, you could use those to uh, sign on to System Manager as an administrator. System Manager also allows you to forward alarms somewhere else via SNMP traps. That could be through SAL, if you have an agreement with Avaya where Avaya monitors your system or maybe an agreement with C1 where C1 monitors your system, you could uh, forward those traps through SAL, through a SAL gateway. And another thing that you could do with System Manager, have your System Manager as a certificate authority. This is for when you want to work with TLS. When you work with TLS, which again is encryption, it's all about encryption, uh, you need to generate some digital certificates certifying that an application is actually what the application is saying to be. You know? So uh, you'll, have a, you'll need to have a digital certificate for session manager, certifying the identity of that session manager, digital certificate for CM, digital certificate for the SBC. Uh, your system manager could be the certificate authority, meaning that the system manager would be the one signing those digital certificates. That's one approach. There are different approaches. You could go with maybe if you have another certificate authority in your system, like maybe an enterprise directory or maybe active directory, someone else who's some other uh, authority, you could do it like that. Or you could use system manager as the certificate authority. Okay? In release, starting with release 6.3.8, Avaya is no longer uh, installing by default the demo certificates that allow you to work with TLS right out of the box. Probably you already know that. Uh, which means that if you want to enable TLS, you are either, I mean, you're the one with making the decision. If you want to do it easily and quickly, yeah, you could still work with those demo certificates. The problem with the demo certificates is that they're not completely secure because well, because of the type of encryption that they use and also because they're signed by Avaya. It's, 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 
it's a kind of a generic certificate signed by Avalia. That's it. But if you want to have someone else signing those certificates, and again, someone else could be system manager or any other authority, you need to create your own certificates. In 7.1, which is a release that came out probably, what, like three months ago, four months ago already? Now Avalia is even being more strict with those certificates. So the improvement, improvements between 7 and 7.1, I mean, or the changes are a lot related to certificates. You know, a lot, a lot related to securities. Yeah, but anyway, system could be your certificate authority. Some stuff related to capacity in system manager, some capacity information. Notice that you could have up to 250 administrators in system manager. However, only 50 of them can log in simultaneously, which is still a lot, you know, a lot of administrators. <laughs> Um, in system manager, you could I have. I think that to be about 49 too many. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> From my perspective. <laughs> Let's see, what else is new here? Uh, we already saw that a number of, number of CMs could be 500. Number of brand session marks 250. This was increased to 507. Ah, number of B5800 branch kit. Have you seen those? The 5800s? Yeah. That's a gateway that looks exactly as the IP office That's because Avaya reused the, ch the chassis of the IP office. <coughs> so if you see this, like, oh wow, we have an IP office, but no, it's actually a SIP gateway. Mm -hmm. It's a SIP gateway. Uh, and it's useful for small offices, you know, so uh, small branches. And you're able to, if you have a small branch, you could work with this uh, 5800 and then provide their SIP phones to the branch. And having those registered to session manager on a sunny day and registered to the 5800 on a rainy day. Yeah. But it's a SIP gateway, remember that. But is that um, for those customers, like these guys have got a lot of IP office. Um, right. Are those IP offices now considered B5800s, no, even though they no, used no, no, to be standalone no. IP offices? No, no, no. Remember, it's just another type of gateway that would be a SIP gateway, and it's not to replace the IP office. It's just that they ended up reusing the hardware. But okay. it's a SIP yeah. gateway. You know, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a totally different approach. It's a SIP gateway to register only SIP phones to that SIP gateway when the SIP phones cannot register with session manager. And can you still put like the DS1 modules in it, like the same no. hardware? Yeah, no, you can't no. put it. No. So there's no. It's SIP only. It's, it's SIP, only. SIP only. I think it's yeah. at the bottom of that list for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> it's SIP only, and the benefits that you could have up to two thousand, because remember that you could have in seven only five hundred branch session managers. So that only gives you survivability somehow for five hundred offices. But if you need to have more, you can you work with this 5800. So, so with IT it's one, a, that's a healthy MPLS you need. It's a complete SIP gateway. Yeah. It's all it's all SIP, and you could manage 2,000 of those. System manager has many functions. Which of the following are part of the system manager functionality? All of that. All of that. Yes, you you already know the Avaya thing. Yes. <laughs> they, yeah. they we can do it all. <laughs> all of it. Not very well. We can do it. <laughs> System <laughs> manager navigation. So you can go to your system manager by opening a browser and either point to the IP address of that system manager or the FQDN or the host name. Right. However, here in the lab, we don't have a DNS server, so you must do it with the I IP think. address. Okay. That's fine. System manager navigation. So you're going to see three sections. The first section, the one on the left, is mostly related to user tasks. Mm -hmm. That's where you create administrators, that's where you uh, could create end users, that's where you could eventually integrate with an Active Directory. You would do it here mm -hmm. under Directory Synchronization in case you want to provision users from Active Directory into System Manager. But, oops, that section on the left is all related to user stuff. The section on the middle, elements, is 
mostly used to configure Avaya applications once you have them added to the system inventory. Once you have the application in system inventory, you go to those menus to administer those applications. And that's for the section in the middle. Section on the right, services, is mostly general services. Uh, if you want a backup system manager, you do it there. If you want to license applications, you do it there. If you want to add applications to the inventory, you do it there. I'll go through some of those menus later. Okay? Because the elements are there regardless of whether they're in your inventory, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So those all show up. You Maybe no if you matter. click on it, maybe there's nothing in there. Yeah. Or it's not somewhere. Like for example, if I go right now, take a look at this. We saw that there is no CM in the in the inventory. However, there is this CM menu here. If I click there, it'll still allow me to go to these places. For example, if I go to endpoints, manage endpoints, it'll still allow me to go there, but there is no CM. No communications, no CM is found. So yeah, you could go there. But there is no nothing you can do until you add the application to the inventory. So, so the uh, the network elements it's only for a via products. So if yes. you put in a third party like Ccom or whatever, you no. Don't, okay. No. That's an extra lease. <laughs> Let's see. And services again, just some general services. I'll talk about them later. Notice that here we have the solution deployment manager. That's that new menu in 7 that allows you to deploy virtual machines on top of the AVP. Not only deploy them, but update them or upgrade them. That's the SDM, solution deployment manager. Notice also, because this is going to be the next slide, that I can only open 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 tabs at a given time. I try to open a new one and system says me, hey, you have exceeded the maximum number of tabs. Close one tab before opening another. Notice, if I try to open something else, it doesn't allow me because I already reached six. I would need to close some tabs and now it'll allow me to... You can't modify that? Yeah, but the modification only allows you to open an extra tab. <laughs> so it's not a big deal. Next software release, that'll be a new feature they add. You can have 10 tabs. Actually, you know what? Maybe in this release, I tried this in <laughs> six. Maybe in this release, all of the stuff that you can configure, like in relation to that kind of behavior, is done in the configurations menu. And there is probably one over there that allows you to specify how many tabs. Let me see. System manager. Common console. There you go. It says five. It's six because it's including the home tab. Sure, sure. Let me see what would be the maximum here. Seven. Seven. So actually two more tabs. Uh, you know, I guess I'll say it. They're out there. It doesn't make any sense at all that that's optional or restricted. This one here? Yeah. Yeah, I know. And uh, why is that they don't set it to the maximum right away and they leave it closed? Yeah. yeah. I know. There must be a reason. <laughs> I don't want to say <laughs> But I completely agree with you. Hey, Master, go, going back to the real quick to the certificates. Uh -huh. Is there is there any impact uh, with, let's say, for some reason, we allow a certificate to expire on a, on a, on a system, on a server, before you know, we find we find out that oh, you know, our certificate expired. We, we need we need to renew it. Any yeah, services? tremendous. There is no service. There is no service. <laughs> no service. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so <laughs> the application is one incident with converge one and panic. And panic, panic, panic mode. Panic mode. Okay. Yes. So yeah. are we are we warned or is that that's something that uh, usually that, system that warns down? you and saying hey yeah okay yeah that's yeah. the phone call that comes from the system. Normally those certificates when the system is a certificate authority <laughs> last for 10, 15 years. I got. You. Oh. Okay. When no, you do it retired. with system as the certificate <laughs> authority. I got you. Okay, let's see. That's a few. That's a few. Let's see here. 
Remember, every browser. time you click on a menu, you open a new tab. Remember that you could have by default <laughs> up to six tabs, including home. Uh, sometimes, depending on the menu, like for example, the user management menu, I'm in page 74 already, you will see that there are tabs within yes. tabs. And this is actually kind of nice because it allows you to have your, your information more organized. Like for example, you see that for a user, there is the identity tab. In the identity tab, you specify the user first name, last name, login name, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you move to the communication profile where you specify how the user communicates. Back in the day, there was only one page and it was so messy <laughs> because it was a long, long page yeah. that you had to <laughs> configure with all of these things that didn't make sense, you know? Anyways, now it's more organized and it's kind of nice. You may access the system interface using which of the following? All of the above. All of the above. D. D. People say that when a buyer says all of the above as an option, that's the option. <laughs> that's the answer. Others say that if you don't know, you just go with C. You have more chance <laughs> <laughs> of getting it right. Okay, we're going to start with labs, and this is going to be the first lab, but let's go have lunch and then then uh, we'll start with the first lab. Okay. What about one hour? You think one hour would be good enough? Let's try one hour today, uh, and we'll see how that works. Yeah.